And let's start uh, with the first presentation, which is entitled A Convex Model for Induction Motor Stance Starting Transients Embed in an OPF Based Optimization Problem, which is going to be presented by Hossein uh, Sekabat Manesh, who is a research assistant in the Power System Research Group at Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. He started his PhD in 2016 on the restoration service in active distribution networks. Please, Hossein, when you want. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Professor Ortega, for the nice introduction. So let me share my screen. Hello, everyone. I hope all is going well with you in these difficult days. Uh, I'm very pleased here to present a joint work. And uh, in this work, we developed a convex model representing the induction motor starting transients. And we embedded this convex model in an OPF-based optimization problem. I will start uh, with a brief problem statement, then I will continue with presenting the mathematical formulation that we developed for this problem. Uh, then I will present the simulation results and I will end uh, with the main conclusions and main contributions of this work. Let's get started. The Starting of large industrial induction motors could be challenging during the power system restoration in a special because the Thevenin's impedance that is seen from the induction motor could be larger in the new configuration of the network after the fault compared to the one in the normal state. Another reason for this challenge could be the heavy starting of induction motors after the uh, outage in the network. And also it could be the case to have several motors to be started simultaneously in the network. The concerns that we have in the system side include the possibility to violate either the minimum voltage or the maximum current protection somewhere in the network, not only at the motor side, and the constraints at the motor side includes the possibility for the motor to stall or to violate the overcurrent limit at the motor side or to reduce the motor life. The actions that we have access to avoid these risks in the system side includes the controllable units that we have access to control, for example, the DGs or the possibility the possibility to detach some of the loads or curtail their consumptions somewhere at the network at some specific times. At the motor side, we have the possibility to change the startup sequence or timing of the startup process of different induction motors in the, in the network. We may have the possibility to reduce the voltage at the motor hosting node using uh, an auto transformer, for example or to curtail the mechanical load on the shaft when we want to start the motor load. Let's uh, go through the problem formulation. The aim is to build a model that is representing the starting transients of induction motor that can be incorporated into an OPF-based optimization problem in a convex way. That's why we propose to discretize the slip range from the standstill until the stable operating point into some fixed steps. And the step value, the, sorry, the slip value at each step is considered fixed and it is regarded as a parameter in the optimization problem. This assumption is valid if the total inertia of the induction motor is high, this is a fair assumption because the motor load that we are modeling is representing in the physical world several induction motors in the low voltage network. But if it is not the case, we have to increase the number of steps so that to decrease the amount of sleep change at each interval. 
Other assumptions that we are taking includes that we are neglecting the DC terms of starting currents. It is also a fair assumption because we are concerning the resistive distribution networks and this DC term is going to be disappeared very shortly after the starting of the induction motor. And we model the network in the phaser, uh, in the, in the phaser mode. When we are writing down the electromagnetic uh, torque of the induction motor, we see that this electromagnetic torque is a nonlinear function of the slip value. That's why we are considering the slip value at each step as a parameter and we fix this value instead of the time duration of each step. And this time duration is the value that we derive as a variable in terms of the slip value. That, that, that was uh, for the model of the induction motor. But, uh, in, okay, uh, along with this induction motor, we have to take care about the change of the behavior of other elements when we start a motor load in the network. One of these elements is uh, the dispatchable and converter-based DGs. These DGs operate in PQ constant mode in the normal conditions, but when we start an induction motor, we see a voltage drop at the hosting node of the DG. And because of this voltage drop, the DG is converting its operation mode from PQ constant mode to the current constant mode. And this mode should be modeling the optimization problem in this way. FP and FQ are the squared of active and reactive components of the current reference. As you can see, the uh, sum of these variables should be equal to the squared of the maximum ampacity limit of the converter. And these are the active and reactive power injections of the DG that are relaxed, as you can see, in order to end up with a convex model. Now we want to implement and to embed actually these derived mathematical formulation into an optimization problem. As an example, we take the power uh, the distribution network restoration. Let's have a brief introduction to this problem first. When we have a fault in the distribution network, once it is isolated, downstream the fault places remain unsupplied. And it is the subject of the restoration problem to be restored using the normally open tie switches connected to the healthy neighboring feeders. And the objective of this restoration problem is to restore the maximum of loads in the minimum possible time. Let's get back to our problem. Due to the difficulty of incorporating all these transient models in the, into the restoration problem, we solve the restoration problem in two states. In the first stage, we consider only the steady state model of different network elements and we derive the optimal solution in terms of the network configuration and the optimal load energization sequence. We fix the network configuration and we modify the derived load energization sequence in the second stage while we are incorporating this derived uh, transient model of the induction motor. And uh, the possibility that we have for this modification is to delay the energization time of some of the loads in the network. And the objective function in the second stage of the optimization problem is to minimize the total energy not supplied due to this delay in the energization time of the loads. The main decision variable that we have in this optimization problem is the load pickup variable that is indicating the energization status of the load at node i and at time t. Another decision variable is the P and Q axis of the DG current reference, as we already saw in the model of the DG. We are facing different types of constraints, namely power flow equations, semi-static model of the motor loads, transient model of the DGs, and transient constraints in the network. Among the most important transient constraints, uh, we have uh, the constraint of the motor that should not be stalled. For that, we have to enforce that the um, 
acceleration torque of the motor at each step k should be positive. Another transient constraint in the network is the network security limits, and they are presented by the corresponding protection curves. These curves are discretized, and then the security limit at each step is derived as a variable instead of assuming a fixed security limit. Let's implement this optimization problem in a test study where we have a fault at the top. Optimal configuration that is derived in the first optimization. In this test network, as you can see, we have a DG and a motor load. The result of the steady state stage is to restore all the loads together at the beginning of the restoration period. But when we solve the second stage of the optimization problem, where we are integrating the derived transient model of the induction motor, we see that we have the restoration of loads at these nodes. And the optimal value of active and reactive components of the current reference of the DG are as shown in this slide. And the objective value is as shown here. In order to validate the accuracy and feasibility of this implemented for the moment in an offline time domain simulation, when we compare the results of this results obtained from the optimization problem, we see that there is a good accuracy between these results, as you can see. And also it shows that the under voltage and over current limits are very respected with the optimal solution that we obtained from the optimization problem. As a next step for the validation process, we implement the derived solution on a power hardware in the loop test experiment that we implemented in collaboration with the INESC tech in Porto. The whole test network is implemented in a real time simulator, except the DG and the motor, as you can see here. So this is the DG in the, in the laboratory, and this is the motor that are in the uh, physical world. The other elements are simulated in the uh, real time simulator. These are the measurements of the DG signals. As you can see, when the motor is started, the DG hosting node experiences a voltage drop. And that's why the DG moves from the PQ constant mode to the current constant mode according to the values that we set for the DG in the current reference mode. And these values are obtained from the optimization problem. And this is the voltage that is measured at the motor hosting node. As we can see here, it is respecting well the under voltage limit. And there is a good matching between this practical result with the value obtained from the optimization problem. Let's wrap up the main conclusions and the main contributions of this work. We presented a mixed integer convex formulation for the load restoration problem, considering the starting transients of dynamic loads namely induction motors. And we developed a semi-static convex optimization model for this induction motor. Uh, also, we developed a convex optimization model for the DGs operating in current constant mode. And at the end, we validated the accuracy of this derived model using the offline time domain simulation and a power hardware in the loop test experiment. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for your presentation, uh, Hossein. Uh, really, really nice. It is time for questions. Any question for the attendees? Either write it down directly in the question and answers or raise your hand. Don't be shy. Okay, I, I have a question. Uh, it, is, it is regarding the induction motor model. You, you have a use a uh, single cage uh, model. Uh, should be possible to do this analysis taking into account, uh, let's say a more complex model, like a double, double cage model to, proper, to represent properly, uh, not only the, the steady state uh, 
not a steady state, the rated operating point, but also the the motor starts during the start. Yeah. The motor is starting. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Ortega, for the for the nice question. Um, here, as you said, we are uh, taking into account uh, this dynamic model of the this is the classical dynamic model of the induction motor, and uh, we uh, and we just um, discretize this uh, a slip range into some fixed steps in order to end up with a convex optimization model. By the way, this model, uh, before answering to your uh, question precisely, I want to highlight that this model is uh, valid at the starting um, phase of the motor also. And the starting mode of the induction motor is the focus of this work, by the way. We are not focusing on the steady state operation or on the normal operating point of the induction motor. We are focusing really on the starting of the induction motor. And when we are comparing the results that we developed from this optimization problem with regard to this time domain simulation results, we see a good accuracy. So the blue one, and sorry, the red ones are the values that are obtained from the optimization model. And the blue ones are the ones that are obtained from the time domain simulation. When we see a good accuracy, it can guarantee the good accuracy of the de uh, developed model. But uh, when uh, we want to make it more complex, uh, for the moment, I didn't see any motivation to make it more complex and because it is representing in a, in a good, accurate enough way. But if we want to make it more complex, we have to remind that we have to end up with a convex optimization model. Uh, I didn't get into details of the other models to see if it is possible to model it in a convex way or not. But if it is possible, then um, this uh, methodology can incorporate the other complex uh, models of the induction motor also. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answer. It's a pleasure. Any, any question from the audience? Okay, I have more questions. Uh, yeah. do, do you have tested a system with uh, more than one uh, motor in different uh, connection points in, in the distribution system. Um, uh, it is required to adapt your algorithm or? Yeah, um, it, actually it, it was uh, regarded as a, a future work and I suggested this uh, idea as, as a future work in the paper, by the way, in the meanwhile, I did it. And uh, for, regarding the transient model of the induction motor itself, it is uh, compatible to uh, be used in a s multiple uh, induction motor case. There is no need to, to adapt it, but for the optimization problem and how to uh, integrate this model into the optimization problem, there are some needs for the, for the adaptation. And we have to think about a multi-period optimization problem in that case. And these are uh, the, just, uh, the adjustments that are needed in the optimization problem uh, itself, not in the model of the uh, induction motor. And I tested uh, also that case and it is working very well with a very reasonable computation time, even for the multi-period optimization problems. Uh, thank, excuse me. Hello. Uh, Thanks a lot for your- oh, uh, As a pleasure. <laughs> thank you very much. Sorry, I okay. just missed, missed the voice for, for a okay, short time. Perfect. Thank you. So thanks. Thanks a lot for your presentation and uh, answer of my questions.